Now throughout history, several diseases come and go, some worse than others. One disease that's been around for 60 years might not be the one you'd expect, and it's on the rise. Our Timber Schumann has the story. We've all seen fictional movies about the rise of zombies. You gotta enjoy the little things. But a real life disease is on the rise and is putting some Colorado wildlife halfway there. According to USGS, chronic wasting disease or zombie deer disease is a fatal neurological illness attacking North American cervids, including white-tailed deer, mule deer, elk, and moose. The prions in the brain um, become misshapen. It is more common in deer, um, especially male deer. We tend to see higher rates in male deer. Colorado Parks and Wildlife PIO Joey Livingston tells me this disease is transferable through shedding, feces, and places where cervids eat. We tend to see it in males more because they tend to have more interactions with other deer, especially during their breeding season, and it tends to take effect at about two to two and a half years is when you start to see the, the symptoms in the male deer. Livingston tells me once an animal contracts this disease, there's no cure or treatment. It is 100% fatal. I tend to see them be lethargic or off on their own, I'm not interested in other deer. You know, their brain is deteriorating. It'll look like that. The heart of Mesa County has shown less than 5% of deer populations are infected, but this disease is closer than you may think. In Unit 60, we've got um, greater than 20% prevalence. And in 6061, it's between 10 and 20% prevalence. Here's a scarier statistic. Across the state, we've um, identified chronic wasting disease in 40 out of 54 of our deer herds. And 17 out of 42 elk herds are now infected. Chronic wasting disease first appeared at a research facility at Fort Collins, Colorado in the 1960s, when a captive deer held in a pen with sheep exposed to a related disease called scrapie contracted CWD. A Colorado Parks and Wildlife senior wildlife vet confirmed that to the Coloradan magazine in 2018. Livingston says every year, different units are selected for testing. If you want your animal tested when your unit is not selected, it will cost $25 and take about three weeks. The hunter would bring um, the, their, the head of their harvested animal down to one of our offices. Um, we would have our uh, CWD technicians there that would pull the lymph nodes out and give the, the head back to the person if they like it. Livingston adds there is no evidence of someone contracting CWD from eating the meat of an affected animal, but he advises against it. I think we knew about it more after the BSE outbreak in the UK back in the early 2000s. Mad cow disease turned into a human problem when the infection jumped species several years ago. Beef cattle specialist veterinarian Julia Herman says mad cow is exactly like zombie deer disease in the way it attacks the prions in the brain. The brain, the spinal cord, and then there's a piece of the small intestine called the distal ilium that gets infected. Drooling, they won't be able to walk very well. They might start they might start losing a lot of muscle mass. She tells me mad cow was a lot less common, especially with required health and safety inspections, even though there are far more cattle than deer and elk in Colorado. There have only been six cases total of BSE diagnosed in the U.S. in history. Livingston says it's highly unlikely someone will contract either disease with no known case of a human contracting CWD. Still, he urges folks to not eat the meat until results of tested deer come back. Um, this is not something that can be cooked out of the meat. Uh, this can survive uh, thousands of degrees. KREX Channel 5, I'm Tipper Shima. Most heat and repair